Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, October 16th, 2014. Now, I guess we ought to name the CDC actually the contradictions in disease control because that's what we're seeing increasingly. It's not getting any better. We're going to talk about that tonight. But first, look at the news that WND covered that Obama's Ebola czar has zero medical experience. They say that White House Homeland Security Advisor Lisa Monaco who has no professional medical expertise, was named by the White House as the point person in charge of coordinating the government's response to Ebola. This is not a surprise. We've seen this in Dallas as well. The man in charge there locally, who is issuing the quarantine orders, meeting with the press, deciding what's going to be done, is Judge Jenkins. And of course, he is a Homeland Security Director of Emergency Preparedness in that area. What we're going to see is a political response followed by a law enforcement response. We're not going to see a rational medical response. This story from Paul Joseph Watson today, a whistleblowing doctor reports that the U.S. Army rejected a successful Ebola drug two weeks before the outbreak. A former flight surgeon had been working with Fort Detrick to develop treatment. And of course, if you know anything about bioweapons, uh, you know that Fort Detrick is at the center of that. In the story, he says, a doctor claims that he developed a successful drug to combat Ebola with the U.S. Army at Fort Detrick, Maryland, but that the research was inexplicably shut down two weeks before the first outbreak of the virus in West Africa. He said in the fall of 2013, his company began collaborating with the U.S. Army at the Level 4 Bioweapons Facility in Fort Detrick, Maryland, to develop the drug and that they saw astounding success. But then, according to Davis, the drug, quote, killed four of the world's deadliest viruses, in a dose-dependent fashion, the Army also noted that uninfected cells in the same cultures were untouched by the drug. In other words, it was non-toxic. However, after the Army initially indicated Davis and his team that they were ready to move ahead quickly with further testing, suddenly communications completely ceased. He said, our once close communications and cordial relationship with the Fort Detrick team went totally and inexplicably silent. Our phone calls went unanswered and emails unreturned. He said he was stunned when first reports of Ebola emerged in Africa just two weeks later. And he says he's followed up since May. He's reached out over 200 times to the heads of every organization involved in this, organizations like the World Health Organization, Centers for Disease Control, various teams at the FDA, the National Institutes of Health, DARPA, of course, and multiple private relief aid organizations. We're seeing this happening over and over again. It is not just the incompetence in the way that they're handling quarantines, medical protocols, not giving nurses hazardous suits to work with an Ebola patient for days. It's not just that. Is that they're standing down with drugs like this that might show promise. An even more interesting case, I think, can be made about the ZMAP drug, which is being touted as a medical cure. Today on InfoWars.com, we have a story, is it possible that an Ebola cure is being hidden from the public? Now, of course, at the same time, they're promoting this miracle drug of ZMAP, a tried and true formula that's been around for 124 years. As a matter of fact, in 1901, a German scientist won a Nobel Prize for it, taking the antibodies from people who have recovered from an infection and using them to treat people who are sick currently with the same disease. It's called convalescent serum. It's also called passive immunity. Now, it was used back in 1901. It was used to treat diphtheria and tetanus with good results. It was also used in the 1940s to prevent and to treat measles and hepatitis. Most recently, an outbreak of SARS in Hong Kong, a doctor there used it to treat 70 patients with very good results. Meanwhile, the WHO is saying that it's an unproven strategy. They're saying that they need to do more research on it, but meanwhile, they need to shut down a black market in blood transfusions. Most of the doctors and medical professionals who have survived that we've seen get these experimental drugs as they come back to the West, most of them have also gotten blood transfusions, especially the ones who have recovered. They seem to believe that it's very effective. The people in Africa seem to believe it's very effective. It's a technique that's been used for a very long time, yet they're not doing anything. They could cheaply set up a donor registry and test for blood. They have thousands of survivors that they could put into that donor registry. When they pursue ZMAP, which is based on the same strategy, except instead of using real human antibodies, it uses genetically modified mouse antibodies injected into GMO tobacco plants. It's an industrial patented artificial GMO version imitating the strategy that they say is unproven. 
Why would they do that if it was unproven? Why would they be rushing to manufacture this in mass and let the disease run its course when they could already start treating people with a simple blood donor registry? Well, we see nothing but lies and disinformation and confusion coming out of the contradicting D CDC. And this is what we saw this week. We had Obama earlier come out and tell residents that they could not catch the disease sitting next to someone in a bus. Now at a press conference, reporters from CNS News questioned the CDC director about that because of course the CDC has been telling people just the opposite. People who've worked in the field say they believe that you can get it by touching something that someone else has touched. So they questioned him on this contradiction and what he basically said was, well, no, of course you can't get it sitting on the bus but we don't want people who have it to get on a bus because they might give it to somebody. Here's what he said exactly. I think there's two different parts of the equation. First is, if you're a member of the traveling public and are healthy, you shouldn't be worried that you might have gotten it by sitting next to someone. No, the answer to that is no. Secondly, if you're sick and you may have Ebola, should you get on a bus? The answer to that is also no. You might become ill. You might have a problem that exposes someone around you. There we go. That's the inherent contradictions. The same sorts of things that we've seen from politicians who are put in charge of a medical emergency like Judge Jenkins. He issues a quarantine for the people who were living with Mr. Duncan, and then he goes and visits for a very long time with them in the apartment, transports them for 45 minutes, shows up at a press release and tells people, I'm wearing the same shirt that I had while I was hanging with them. That's the kind of contradictions and misinformation we're seeing. Now today we learned that a middle school in Dallas is actually getting a deep cleaning related to the Ebola outbreak. What's up with that? We have this special report from Joe Biggs. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com with breaking news right now out of Rolette, Texas. It's just outside of Dallas. A Schrade Middle School, I say again, Schrade, S-C-H-R-A-D Middle School, is now being cleaned because two children had parents who flew on the flight from Dallas to Cleveland with a second nurse Ebola pa uh, patient that's already been moved into Atlanta. Now, the children are all still at the school, from what I was told. They weren't going to be evacuated. No one's being quarantined at the time. But they said they plan on having a thorough cleaning done today, tonight, and this weekend. But they're still going to allow children to come back and act like nothing has happened. So stay tuned for more reports as I follow this here at Infowars.com. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com. Hello? Uh -huh. Hey, uh, my name is How Joe. Can I help you? Hey, my name is Joe Biggs. I'm a reporter out of Austin. There's reports your school's on lockdown. Is there any truth to that? Just a minute. there yes oh are you, were you wanting the nurse um i know you guys I've, I've gotten multiple reports from different news sources in dallas okay. people have called me and i'm trying to find out is the school in lockdown or not no sir no sir i don't we don't know why no we've heard that that's out there but no sir not at all okay so cdc has not been contacted because i've been told different i don't I don't know if CDC has been contacted. We have two students who have parents that were on the flight with the second nurse, uh -huh. um, the, the flight to Cleveland. And as far as we know, the families were not sitting anywhere near her. The, as far as we know, the families have not been quarantined. So we're just as a super precaution, we're doing a deep cleaning of our school right now, tonight, and this weekend. So you're allowing school to continue right now, though? Well, so that's not my decision. No, I'm just saying is that is that I'm just I'm not I'm not like like questioning you. I'm just asking you is it still no. going on right now? School is still on. School is on right now and as far as I know, school is still happening tomorrow. Okay. So Is there a point of contact somebody who's a media person if if I need to contact later just to get too quicker? Um like a with the communications yes. person? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, can you hold on and I can get that phone number? Yes. Ho hold on. Sir, are you still there? Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay. Um, the person to call is Chris Moore, and his office number is 
three, two. What's your name? Julie Coleman. I'm one of the counselors here. Okay, we'll be safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that's a confirm. <laughs> Then I would ask, based on all that's transpired over the past week, should Texas families remain confident in the ability of our public health system to respond to infectious diseases of this nature? Because the patient had no symptoms on that flight, had no fever, had no symptoms on those flights, it was actually two flights of them, there is virtually no risk. You can push me as far as you want to say zero. I will not say zero. It's knowing what I know, there is there is zero risk. I said it. There it is. I shouldn't say that. There's no risk. There's no risk. Um, Ebola virus could be sitting there, and if I'm touching it with unbroken skin, it's not a risk. DNA force. When cells become toxic, they die early and aging sets in. DNA force. No one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. Just one of the key compounds. BioPQQ is backed by major clinical studies. DNA force. We now have the synergistic solution. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA force. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals super male vitality by infowars life is so powerful that i only take half the recommended dose for a limited time we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com. September 30th, 2014, the CDC announces the first diagnosed Ebola case in the United States. Dallas County Judge Clay Jenkins says there is no risk of the virus spreading. A family of four under quarantine this afternoon escaped the confines of their cramped apartment for a spacious private home in a gated community. Dallas County Judge Clay Jenkins personally escorted them to their new undisclosed location. I'm wearing the same shirt I was when I was in the car with that. Uh, family. If there were any risk, uh, I would not uh, expose myself or my family. October 12, 2014. The second case of Ebola is confirmed in Dallas. The virus is contracted even though the nurse wore full protective gear. This time, Dallas County Judge Clay Jenkins has reasons for concern. The, the, the people that are, um, that were, were self-monitoring, all of whom are health care uh, professionals will now be monitored uh, twice daily by epidemiologists and interviewed today by CDC epidemiologists. I'm Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com at the University of Texas, Austin. Now, I came out here to the campus today, I wanted to ask people if they would sign my Ebola Equality Act of 2014. Now what this states is that we are going to allow symptomatic, non-symptomatic Ebola patients to come in from West Africa into our country and then give them the, 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 the free reign to move around and do whatever they want. We leave our borders wide open, we let everybody come in and get taken care of. You know, we, we don't like to take care of the veterans or anything like that, that's just ridiculous. But let's, let's bring these Ebola patients in and you know, there's not going to be an outbreak because Obama says there's not, or Ebola. And then uh, the CDC director says uh, there's zero chance that this is going to get out of control. So, you know what, let's see how many people actually agree with these puppets, with these uh, global elitists who actually think that nothing's going to happen. Let's see how many people are, I don't want to say dumb, but 
willing to actually sign this and allow Ebola to come into our country. Let's go check it out. Well, this is the Ebola Equality Act. What it's gonna do is allow us to fly in uh, patients with Ebola. So what this does is we're gonna allow them just to get on the plane, symptomatic or not, fly on over. It'll be commercial airline. You know, CDC says you're not gonna get it. It's not airborne, so you're fine. You know, a lot of people out here are being racist, saying that we should just like shut down flights and not allow people to come in here to our country with Ebola. I mean, that's pretty ridiculous, right? We have better uh, medical facilities, don't we? Yeah, that's the truth. Can you believe all these people that say we should just stop flights from West Africa? And Yeah, I think it's insane. I mean, I, like I get their concerns and everything, but... Um... I mean, the CDC knows exactly what they're doing, right? Right, and I also think it might be a racialized. Hold on, I don't want to touch that yet. I got to sanitize my hands. And I can never be too careful, you know? Yeah. I don't know where anybody's been around here. All right, thanks. And we can get them some football tickets, baseball tickets, hang out. There's still people that deserve to be taken care of. That's what Obamacare is for. We're going to leave the southern borders open too, if they want to, you know, take a flight to, uh, you know, Costa Rica and then travel up to Mexico and come in, they can come in that way. There's no one watching, anyways. President Obama says you'll be fine, so there's nothing to worry about. No, I know I'm a nurse. I'm okay. studying nursing, so that's why I'm like, yeah. Bring people with Ebola over here. Right, why does it seem shocking? I think I'll pass. Thank you. You don't want to bring Ebola to the country? No. Our president does. Come on, the CDC says it's fine. People with Ebola deserve to live, come on. Look, we're gonna bring them into the country, fly them over, get them health care. come on. Excuse me, do you wanna help save lives in West Africa? No one cares. We're a bunch of racists. Oh, and if you initial here, that's just agreeing that you'll, uh, you know, take one of the patients in and help them out. All right. Okay, there we go. you're gonna initial. Well, hold that real quick. Nick, can never be too careful. Well, there's a bowl of stuff going around. Oh, yeah. All right, thanks. There you go, man. You have a good one. So if we don't want to be a host, do we, like, not initial? Yeah, if you don't want to let an Ebola patient live with you, then just don't initial. There's a lot of people who do, though. Okay. But, I mean, then again, if you don't want to die, I mean, that's safe to say, yeah. And just make sure you guys wear a mask and stuff. <laughs> no one else has gotten it with uh, all the equipment on, right? Oh, never mind, those nurses did. Yeah. yeah it's, who knows, maybe our government is crazy. So this is uh, how people will come over here to be cured, or...? Yeah, to bring them into our country so they can live a normal life. Yeah. I don't want any more people to die of Ebola, do you? <laughs> no. There's lots of people dying, bleeding out of their eyes and ears and mouth, and, and it's horrible. But I mean, we'll bring them here to the country if they're symptomatic or not. We can get them sporting events tickets, hang out, let them move freely, have fun. Uh, we'll re reunite them with their family to be administered to a hospital to receive the best treatment in the world. We've got Obamacare, that takes care of everything, and that's free, so come on. Help save some lives. The more Ebola patients we bring into America, the better. Don't you guys agree? Yeah. To receive medical care and reunite with their families if they have some, you know, like so with you Thomas. Do you want them to be able to come here? Yeah, let's bring them in. Obama says it's fine. The CD says, no, CDC says it's fine. Bullshit. Oh, you think so? Hell yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, hold on. I got to put my hand sanitizer on there. I don't know where you guys have been either. <laughs> yeah. Can never be too careful. All right, good. I don't have a bowl then. All right. <laughs> well, let's take care of the ones who do and bring them here and let them have fun. Open up the borders. All right, thanks guys. Have a good Ebola day. The ones who survive got blood transfusions though, but the ones who keep getting these experimental drugs die. But you know, President Obama and CDC knows best. It's not like they've ever intentionally done stuff to harm us, like push vaccines or anything. Thank cool. You. Make sure you get your flu shot too. Yeah. You know, I think it's racist. All these uh, Republicans, all these people are saying that we should shut down flights from West Africa and not let them come in. Don't you think that's pretty ridiculous? No, it's like I saw this news where they, uh rejected a kid from college because he's from over there and he might have Ebola and it's like, he's smart and he's studying, why are you gonna stop him from that? That's retarded. Let's let them all over here, right? Yeah. Oh, and if you want, if you initialed here at the end, that's saying that you'll host an Ebola patient, you'll let him come over and hang out, you take care of him, read him stories, you know? Oh. Oh, cool. Thanks, we'll get a hold of you guys when we bring the Ebola patients in. As you can see, I just spoke to about 30 people and the most disturbing part of this is out of 30 people, I was able to get 17 signatures, an entire full clipboard in less than an hour. These are the youth that are supposed to be going to college and taking on positions to help further our country. And uh, this just blows my mind. And now check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, 11 people, 11 people out of 17. 
initial at the end, where I don't remember at the beginning, I said if you initial at the end, you allow a symptomatic Ebola patient to come live at your home. 11 people said yes to that. You know, some people came by and looked at me and said, are you crazy? Our government's out of their mind. Some people just laughed when I was sitting out there saying, hey, let's bring Ebola into the country. Come on, don't be racist, you know, but there's still 17 people who are one day are gonna become doctors because some of the people who signed this said they were in nursing school. Some were gonna be doctors. These, this is why the CDC is messed up as it is. We have a bunch of people in there who have no idea what they're doing and they're putting American lives at risk. This is mind blowing. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing the first proprietary oxygen-based intestinal cleanser, Oxy Powder, backed by FDA-approved phase one, two, and three clinical trials. All the toxins from the air, the food, the water, ultimately ends up in the gut or affects the gut. Take your health into your own hands and start cleansing your body today with Oxy Powder. Secure your Oxy Powder today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. And finally tonight here at InfoWars Nightly News, I want to share with you personally what was one of the most surreal experiences of my life. I went to see Kill the Messenger that's been out for about a week in the United States and worldwide based on a book by Gary Webb, uh, who was, of course, the journalist who wrote the Dark Alliance story back in the late 1990s about the CIA and the crack cocaine epidemic. And as I watched the two-hour film, it was really more of a documentary than it was a action thriller based on a true story. And I've got to say that the producer and also the lead star, Jeremy Renner, deserves multiple Academy Awards for his lead role, because I knew Gary Webb and knew him well, and for the production. I don't know if it'll win all those awards because the average person or even the Academy doesn't have the inside knowledge I have on this. I knew Gary Webb very, very well. I never met him in person. I had to have interviewed him 15 times or more, sometimes for two hours at length on my syndicated radio show in the same time slot it is today. Uh, because back then he was an outcast. He'd won all these awards uh, for his Dark Alliance piece. They tried to discredit it, never really discrediting it. And of course, now it's been declassified just a month ago that the CIA admits that they did target him, they did try to destroy him. And watching the two hour film, I ran through the gamut of emotions. Intellectual realization of tyranny, uh, what a hero Gary Webb was. Uh, I felt terrible for his friends, editors and others that turned their back on him under the pressure and the propaganda going through a lot of the similar things that Gary Webb has gone through, uh, I empathized with him. And then all the interviews and all our private conversations began to come back to me, and I actually felt nauseated when the CIA was threatening his children and uh, when he had people breaking into the night to his apartment. And because I remember Gary Webb telling me about all this. The general idea of the CIA dealing drugs um, was something that the American mainstream press had never written about before. I remember Gary Webb sending me a disc of uh, documents that he wanted me to put online for his new book that was coming out. And he wanted to break a lot of that information on my show because I was willing to do it. And then I also shared guilt with the rest of the people in the movie because even though I'd had him on and knew the CIA was bringing in drugs, hell, they'd been doing that since the 60s on record with opium out of Vietnam. It was that I already knew that. I'd already interviewed him a bunch. And so it was kind of an old story. And I thought it was a war we'd won getting the truth out. I didn't realize they were still destroying him and he was fighting 
for his life. And he told me they were threatening him and breaking into his house. He told Freeway Ricky Ross, who I've interviewed probably 10 times as well, the first interview from prison. We got that with Kevin Booth years ago. Ross said on my show right after he committed suicide, after Webb died, that he had told him they were going to kill him. And how they do it is they come to your house. They say, we're going to kill your kids if you don't fill out the suicide note. And then they'll show you photos of your kids, you know, riding their motorcycle or getting off the school bus. And then they shot him twice in the head. And they undoubtedly murdered him. Then they threatened the family and they shut up. And I kept expecting in the movie that they would go along with the suicide narrative. They didn't do that. They clearly imply the CIA killed him. It's just a masterpiece. I mean, that's all I can say. And thank God this happened because Gary Webb will now get his reputation back posthumously. And it will send a major message to the establishment that you can even kill the messenger, but that you can't kill the signal. I am now going to tear apart the five storage buildings we have with all our old books and videos and tapes and letters and tax documents to try to find that disc. Uh, and I'm also going to try to dig out all those interviews uh, that should have been online, but we're having trouble finding them to try to really make at least a documentary for InfoWars Nightly News, adding to the master work that the director and the producers have done with Kill the Messenger. If you see one movie in 2014, if you show your friends and family one film in 2014, if professors are going to recommend one film in 2014 for their college students to go see, it's this. Because I covered this in depth. I interviewed him and the other major players involved, famous Iran-Contra whistleblowers like Tosh Plumley and countless others. I probably interviewed, let's not exaggerate, 30 or more CIA whistleblowers like Terry Reid, who was there at MENA loading the cocaine with Oliver North and Clinton. I mean, I've been in this as much as Gary Webb. I've been threatened over this. And I'm not here lionizing myself. I got nauseated when I realized I was right in the middle of this and am in such a haze covering all this stuff that I didn't even click that I was in the middle of this and didn't even appreciate Gary Webb wanting to work with me. And it makes me see all the other stories I drop. And all, but, but you know what? I can't cover it all. My team can't handle it all either. That's what's so crazy about the level of corruption is it's just overwhelming. And while I was watching the movie, I remembered the last conversation I ever had with Webb. I kept saying, yeah, I'll put the website up. Yeah, I'll help you. And he called up and he said, man, they're destroying my life. I've got all the documents to prove it now. I've got this book coming out to, you know, to vindicate myself. And you said you'd help me. And, and I'll even help you. I'll even pay you after I'm able to sell the book. They've taken everything I got. What the hell's your problem? Jones, you told me you'd help me. Nobody helps me and slam the phone down. And I thought, well, kind of a jerk, but I get why he's under attack. Oh, whatever. And then his head's blown off a few months later. So whatever you do in your life, folks, stand up for whistleblowers, support them, go the extra mile. But in the final equation, he's been vindicated. And I don't know why the CIA came out a month ago and admitted that they targeted him and tried to destroy him and did all this. Maybe they feel guilty for what they've done. I don't know. Or maybe it's just a threat to all other journalists. and They think this will create a chilling effect. It's just so sick. And, and, and now it's come out, the rest of the story, that they're running the Los Zetas crew. Uh, it's in the El Paso Times, the Chicago Tribune, that these drug dealers bringing in billions a month in cocaine and other drugs are admitting they work for the CIA to control the networks, that the big banks laundered 370-something million in drug money in a two-year period. That was even in Bloomberg a few years ago. And no one gets in trouble. Gary Webb is and was a true hero. And when they threatened his children and his wife and his family, he didn't back down. And then I watched those actors playing the parts of the editors and the... Uh, people uh, at the uh, San Jose Mercury News and how they turned their back on their friend. I didn't hate them. I felt sick uh, at just the, the herd, cowardly mentality that just runs through culture and runs through society today. And I almost didn't even do this review of the film because I don't know how you talk about something so real, so powerful. 
the actor playing Webb sounds like him, looks like him, acts like him. When he's getting frustrated in the movie and getting mad and yelling at people, I have been yelled at just like that. It, 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 it's, it's a nightmare almost to realize that I was living a nightmare and I was so busy covering so many stories, I didn't even realize how important it was. Because it wasn't just about the government bringing in drugs and the banks laundering the money and CIA aircraft crashing in Mexico and all the stuff that's come out since then. It was about them destroying the truth and destroying a man who stood up for what was right in the face of his house getting broken into and his car getting messed with and his kids getting threatened and, his, and losing his wife and her divorcing him and everybody turning their back on him and them just assassinating his character first before they killed him. And I realized that if they can assassinate my character or Ron Paul's character like they're trying to do, they had the White House attack us twice in the last week through media matters, that they will kill me. And that's why I got nauseated. It's not even the fear of death. It's that our weakness are these people's strength. And the fact that we lay down and are passive is why this corruption has grown and grown and grown. So throughout this piece, we've been flashing up some of these news articles uh, that are here, but people should go back and read these about confirmed DEA struck a deal with Mexico's most notorious drug cartel. Uh, confirmed Mexico drug plane used for CIA rendition or kidnap torture flights. Or Operation Fast and Furious uh, as a false flag. All of this is coming out. And it's because of people like Gary Webb breaking down that first layer, being the shock troop of truth, uh, being on the very cutting edge of trying to bring justice to this society, it's people like him, the foundation that all of us, men and women of every race, color, and creed, stand together today. And they targeted this individual and destroyed this individual because they're afraid of the power of the individual. They're afraid of what people with truth and justice can do. And that's why I always end this transmission by saying, if you are watching or listening to this, you are the resistance. You do have power. We can make a better world. We can stand up for what's right. We can end this drug war and decriminalize. We can start shutting down the prisons. We can have an economy based on justice and based on innovation and based on exploration, not based on fraud not based on uh, SWAT teams and lawyers and huge prison complexes. We have the biggest prison population in the world. We have the worst levels of cancer and disease in the world. We've gone from the most blessed country to the most cursed by every metric. Well, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Great job of the crew earlier here in studio, breaking it all down. Lord willing, I'll be back tomorrow live on the radio, 11 to 2 Central, InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. I want to salute... The folks that put out Kill the Messenger, they've tried to kill me as a messenger. So I hope we can all come together in solidarity and promote liberty. And I hope the producers and the stars of the film will come on the show so that we can uh, share our experiences together. But again, I salute the makers of this film for their courage. There's never been a film like this made before. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139.
You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide. Something very mysterious is going on right now that statistically seems impossible, but somehow almost overnight, every major alternative website that challenges the establishment media is suddenly experiencing a dramatic decline in readership. Well, at the same time, pro-government websites are quickly becoming popular. Well, this according to the latest Amazon-owned Alexa ratings that strangely indicate many so-called conservative websites suffered a steep decline in rankings through the month of October 2014. The puzzling trend, first observed by WorldNet Daily reporter Leo Homan, appears to have affected many of the web's most popular alternative sites, including WND, The Drudge Report, The Daily Caller, and yes, of course, Infowars. And oddly enough, it seems to have affected every major website that carries headlines contradictory to the Obama administration's talking points. Hmm. Let's take a look at last month's bizarre plunge in traffic ratings traditionally classified as alternative or conservative media. Infowars.com, October 2014. A sudden and dramatic drop off. WorldNet Daily suffers a steep decline as well. The Daily Caller, down. Breitbart, even Fox News suffer huge drop-offs. And look what happened to the Drudge Report. Their Alexa rating absolutely plummeted. Meanwhile, in contrast, pro-government websites are mysteriously trending right now. Look at the sudden popularity of Think Progress, Media Matters, NPR, Democracy Now!, and even Planned Parenthood is suddenly becoming very popular. And even though, according to the New York Times, MSNBC is experiencing one of their lowest quarterly ratings in history, somehow, magically, the left-leaning network is suddenly becoming popular on the internet, according to Alexa. It just doesn't make any sense. I am bad, Media Matters. I'm evil. You're good to be state-run media. You're good to go work with Alexa to fake the ratings numbers, to show every libertarian or conservative site losing 90% of its viewers or readers when our own internal metrics were spiking and exploding at all-time highs, and you were too dumb to even get Alexa to change their internal subscription service where you could actually get the numbers showing an over 70% increase in traffic in just the last month, you stinking liars. Now look, these drastic changes in Alexa ratings are blatantly inaccurate. Our very own analytics at InfoWars, for example, show a zero traffic decrease. The Alex Jones Show continues to reach millions of people every single day, and our YouTube channel is absolutely skyrocketing. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. So it looks like Alexa has finally joined the dark side and they no longer play a role as a politically impartial internet ranking service. That's the bad news, but the good news is that the establishment is running scared right now, and the obvious blatant infiltration of Alexa looks like a desperate move to conceal the alternative media's massive rise in popularity, and that's because we're on the march and the empire's on the run.